And I have returned. Welcome back to Zen Bell's Plays The Sims 3. I am still in the process of putting junk out for this family to move in with. Um, yeah. So, hey. I don't know what's new with you, buddy. Not much, because you can't answer me, because I am on the other side of the screen. Hey. You're gonna have to... I mean, you can always pause, but other than that, you're pretty much trapped listening to my annoying voice. Anyways... We're gonna have some fun today, implying that we weren't having fun before, but we were! At least I was. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, let me see. Right now, picking out junk for these guys to move in with. A magazine restraint system. Oh god, I love the way that The Sims words things. Like, it's just... It's not campy. It's melodramatic, in a way. Like, it's, it's very dramatic. I like it. I like it. Anyways, it's charming. So we're picking out, you know, items that this family would probably have. We have, uh, oh yeah, I'm totally putting out this misplaced Mexican-looking pinata type thing. Um, we're, uh, we're picking out sort of the things that this family would probably have. We have a magical father, we have a human mom, and I think the kids are both fairies, so I'm gonna keep in mind like what they are and the type of personalities that they have as well, of course. Um, oh yeah, that the backpack thing. I always thought this item was really cute. I'm a sucker for primary colors, sort of like that. These aren't gonna stay in the stable. I'm just putting all the wall crap in here. I'm trying not to swear, so forgive me if I slip up from time to time. Okay, we have brunette mermaid, blonde mermaid, black mermaid. I really like this one. Not gonna lie. Like, definitely picking this one. Because it's different! I don't really see many, um, black mermaids. There totally need to be more black mermaids. More black mermaids! I'm talking to you artists out there. Give me more black mermaids. Blue ducky! I don't know why. I really have no idea why this is, but when I was a little kid, uh, I was watching Sesame Street, and there was this segment where you needed to, like, spot where Ernie's rubber ducky was, but there were all these other cool duckies flying past the screen, and it was kind of weird because... Like, why would you show us all these cool ducks if we're supposed to look for the lame default one? Like, what's up with that? So, one of the ducks was blue, and I don't know why, but I was always really, really drawn to blue rubber ducks. I just think that's legit for some reason. I like anything that is a different color than what it's supposed to be. Like, oh, raspberries are, you know, cool and all that they're red, but did you know that there are yellow raspberries? And they basically look like baby pineapples. There are pink blueberries. I actually have a bush of them growing out in my garden right now. Um, Nectar Tantalus. I have a feeling I'm going to use that for something. Anyways, <coughs> pardon me. Um, yeah, I like anything that is a different color than what it's supposed to be. Albino things, melanistic things. If you don't know what melanism is, it's where things are, like, all black instead of all white because they have too much pigment instead of too little. I think that's fascinating stuff. That is just my jam, honestly. That is the stuff I like. Rugs! Okay. This is an interior design thing. I don't know if anybody else is as nitpicky as I am about interior design, but just in case you are, um, rugs are an excellent, excellent way to bring a floor together. Like right here, you have all of this floor space. Well, you could put a rug there and it would make the room sort of tie it together and make it look less, you know, open and empty. It just puts something there. Um, and it's also functional, you know, for, like, welcome mats to wipe your feet off. Rugs are just a cool multi-purpose thing. Now, because this is where the horse is, uh, I really wouldn't recommend putting a rug in a barn just because I would be scared that the horse would slip. Um, I don't really know a whole lot about horses. This is actually the first time I've ever had a horse 
you know, in the main family that I play in The Sims. So with Toboggan, I'm probably going to screw up a lot, and you'll be yelling at your screen like, Zin, what are you doing? That's not what you do with a horse. I'm trying, you guys. I swear. I'm trying. Don't, don't hurt me. Uh, anyway. You know what's really great to have in a house? A full-length mirror. I grew up in a house where there was a full-length mirror at the end of the hallway, and that thing got so much use. Like, that's just such a cool, useful thing to have. Oh, heck yes, paintings. We gonna have so many paintings, you guys. I love, love, love this ridiculous item right here. Like, what? It's going in here. Like, for better or for worse, I'm gonna find a place for it. Even if it's outside. It has no business being outside. You shouldn't put a painting outside, but it'll just go in some absurd spot just so I can have it. My grandfather, actually, um... Uh, I grew up with uh, my grandparents, and my grandfather had a shop, he called it. A workshop. Um, where he would fix antique furniture and, um antique cars and in that shop for some reason he had this painting of a matador and I don't know why it's still there by the way uh, it's just a weird painting that's just chilling in that in that shop I mean it's very weathered you should never ever put an oil painting out where it can get weathered like that but you know for all of the elements that that painting has endured it is only minimally warped so, just in case anybody, you know, is thinking on putting, uh, Binary Betty. Binary be what? Interesting. I'm sorry, I got really, really, um, confused about that. Oh, that reminds me. Um, The Sims 4. Wow! How cool is it that, um, you can have multiple genders, like, not just the, uh, the standard two, but you can have, like, gender, uh, non-binary characters. Like, that's really huge for me. Like, as somebody who is, uh, non-binary, I think that's amazing. Um, I am gender fluid. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I like to be, you know, both a dude and a chick, and sometimes neither, and sometimes something in between. Uh, that's just my jam, you know? I, I don't really like the idea of um, being forced into one role or another. I much, much, much prefer just naturally being myself. Uh, sometimes it's fun to, you know, pretend to be one or the other, but I really, deep down, I don't really feel like I am uh, one or the other. I just feel like I'm in between or neither, you know? I'm just me. I kind of dig that. You know, once I realized what non-binary genders were, I was like, wow, that's me. That's what I've been all this time, and now I finally know what it's called. So that was a pretty cool moment for me. I like these poems. We're gonna have at least, at least two of those put somewhere. I love indoor plants. I'm such a nerd about plants. Um, I have a list of... Um, uh, the plants that NASA approved as uh, air purifiers, and I intend to grow those in my house one of these days. So that's a fun thing that I have to look forward to. Um, I know this is just The Sims, and I know it's just, you know, not a real thing, but I still feel bad. I like calla lilies, they're really pretty and nostalgic for me, but I would still feel bad putting them out in this place because there's a dog and cat, and those plants are not dog and cat friendly, so I'm probably going to hold off on calla lilies. Um, I grew up in an office, which sounds really weird. Uh, when I was a really tiny baby, um, my mother couldn't take care of me, so I was with my grandma a lot, and my grandmother uh, worked in a call center, um, sort of like an operator's room type deal, and I would be in my little baby crate under her desk. I grew up, you know, like paper clips for my toys, like sticky notes. Uh, it's just weird looking back. Like some kids had like a nursery or like daycare. I did too later on. But starting out, I was in an office, like just a gray 90s office space. Like whenever I hear like 90s landline telephones, 
I always feel really nostalgic just remembering uh, remembering those times when I was just extremely, extremely young. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a weird upbringing thing. I remember my grandma's boss. She had the weirdest, coolest boss. Um, she rescued raccoons and possums that were orphaned. Uh, she would just rescue wildlife. She had a small farm that her and her husband lived at. And they, that's just what they did for whatever reason. Like, they would just rescue um, orphaned wildlife. Uh, they had chickens, they had dogs and turkeys and cats, I think. Um, and she had a lit up treasure chest in front of her office, I remember, because I used to try to take the little plastic clear jewels from them, and I would get in trouble for that. But uh, she she had that, and she also, I remember sitting on her desk. She had, you know, like a chair that she could sit and do interviews with, and you could just stare at her desk, but looming over her head was this big stone gargoyle. She had a shelf over her computer and that sort of rolling chair and she would sort of turn around like I've been expecting you. You know this very frizzy haired bespectacled woman who was really a very charming and silly you know lovely person um, but she had this intimidating intimidating gargoyle that I loved as a kid looming over her desk and I if I ever become like a CEO of a company or I have an office like she does or did in the past, I am totally going to get myself a gargoyle like that. Like, that is just the coolest thing to me. So, yeah, you know, life goals. The people I look up to. It's, it's always good to have role models in your life. I have some pretty weird ones, you know, some pretty obscure ones, like my grandmother's old boss. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about, you know, mentors and different things in a later video. For right now, I think, you know, I'm going to call it quits on this recording. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'll see you on the next one, friend.